Hey y'all, it's Joseph Lipper, and today I'm going to do a quick walkthrough of the VEX High Stakes Game Manual. Now, in this overview, I'm going to cover the entire 129 page game manual in just a few minutes. I'm going to cover all the rules that you need to know and skip over all the rules that you don't need to know because, um, believe it or not, most of the rules in the game manual are not important. They're kind of edge cases that won't really show up in regular competition. So I'm going to go over all the rules you need to know to build a really successful robot this season. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Um, if you have not seen Vex High Stakes before, I was just watching this video. It tells you all the details on how this game works, how the points are scored, how the mechanics work um, in just four minutes here. Um, and then once you get a handle on that, um, I would uh, I actually have a really cool rules guide f that is uh, covers pretty much all the stuff we are going to cover in this video um, in just this two pages. You can print it out front, back, one piece of paper, um, and you can just have it in your back pocket. Whenever you have a question about a rule, it'll probably be on here. Um, and this is a I I've uh, covered the entire game manual and broke it down into two pages for you on here, and you also get a field setup guide. So click the description if you want to download this document, and I'll send it to you. Um, super easy, super nice to have. I use it all the time when I'm working on my robot. Um, but yeah, let's get started. So first up, we're going to talk about the R rules. These R rules just tell you what you can put on your robot, how how you can legally build your robot. So let's get started. Um, R1 just tells you your team can have one robot, you can have two robots, one robot. Um, next up, we have um, R2. R2 just says that uh, you can't have like your dad build your robot for you. You have to build your robot. Um, this is a student center program. There's adult robotics programs out there for adults, but this is a student robotics program, so you build your robot. Um, R3 just like pass inspection at the event. They, at, the, at every event, they're going to inspect your robot and make sure it follows the rules that we're about to talk about and that are on my uh, scoring reference guide. Um, yeah, so uh, this, they're just going to inspect your robot, make sure it passes all the rules. Um, R4 is actually really important. This one just says that, it, it. this one is actually on my reference guide. Um, your robot must fit in 18-inch uh, by 18-inch by 18-inch cube at the start of the match. Uh, no bigger than that. Once uh, For the beginning of the match, once the match starts, you can get bigger. I'll talk about that later, though. Um, and then uh, next we have R6. R6 just says don't damage the field. Don't, like, poke holes in the tiles and stuff like that. Um, uh, R7 just says um, that you uh, have to build your robot from VEX pieces. You can't use like a chainsaw on your robot and because that's not uh, VEX pieces. Um, <clears throat> uh, next we have uh, R9. Um, R9 just says that um, you can use decorations and stuff on your robot, but they have to be only for decoration. You can't have this giant claw on your robot that scores all the points for you that you bought on eBay or something and just say like, hey, look at that decoration. Um, no, it's not a decoration. A decoration means it is for decoration. It doesn't help you score points. Um, R10 just tells you about nameplates. Nameplates are these pretty much license plates on your robot. Um, they tell you everyone what your team number is and so that everyone can see which robot is yours. Um, next up, we have uh, R12. Uh, R12, uh, actually these next few rules kind of go together. Um, R12 basically says you get one brain on your robot. The brain is like the controller processor for the robot. It tells the robot what to do, it runs your code, all that stuff. Um, you get eight motors on your robot. Um, as R13, so you get, this one's a little bit confusing, but basically you get eight motors on your robot. Um, but there's these smaller motors that you can trade one of your motors in for two of those smaller motors, um, is kind of how this one works. So you can technically have more than eight motors, but you get eight of these big motors, or you can train one of these bigger motors for two small motors. Um, next up, uh, R14, you get one battery, that is how your robot is powered, you get this battery. Um, uh, Let's see, oh, R16, R16 is pretty cool because this one, um, I actually have this one on my sheet too. Um, you can pretty much modify any hardware component you want. You can cut all the metal into different sizes, you can cut shafts, you can modify spacers, shaft colors, um, pretty much anything you want. It's it's super cool um, as long as it's like hardware. You can't modify electronics, you can't modify pneumatics. Um, but yeah, it's... Um, Super cool. If you've done VEX IQ, it's very different than that. You can modify most of the components in uh, VEX V5. Um, next up, uh, we have um, R18. This one just says that you uh, have, where is it? There you go. R18, um, just, you, you get a radio. Um, uh, like, the radio is how the robot talks to your controller and to the field and all that stuff. So uh, make sure you have a radio on your robot. Um, and then uh, R19 is really cool, actually. A lot of teams make good use of this. Basically, this one just says that you get... Um, you get plastic uh, sheet that you can use on your robot. Like you can use, uh, as long as it's, the rule is that you get a 12 inch by 24 inch sheet of a non-shattering plastic. Um, 
or that that um, a sheet's worth of parts. So if you could like put all the parts together in that sheet, then that's okay. Um, there's a diagram here. This is not okay, but like you could if you just have a giant sheet on your robot like that, that's okay. The sheet cannot be more than one sixteenth of an inch thick, um, and it has to be non-shattering. So you can no no acrylic, but you can use stuff like polycarb, Delrin, stuff like that um, if you'd like. Um, Next up, we have R21. R21 is super cool because if you have other parts from other companies that you want to put on your robot, as long as they're commercial and they're um, they're like, the, it details it more in this rule, but as long as they're commercially available parts, chances are if it's similar to a VEX part, it's probably going to be legal. Oh yeah, we got a few more rules in this uh, robot rules. Uh, you get some pneumatics. Pneumatics are super cool. A lot of teams make use of these. Um, basically, uh, you get two air tanks and unlimited cylinders um, on your robot. These two air tanks have to be pumped to no more than 100 psi at the start of the match, um, and you get as many cylinders and solenoids and um, all pneumatic tubing as you want on your robot. R28, I think, is our last robot rule. Um, basically, uh, this is more of a general rule. If you accidentally break a rule, that's kind of more okay. Um, if you on purpose break a rule, that could be really bad. You can get what's called a G1 violation, um, which is really, really bad. You can get disqualified from like the entire event or the entire season if you do something really bad. So stay away from purposely violating rules. They can get you in big trouble if you're not careful. Um, but um, if you accidentally break a rule, they try and be pretty nice about it. Um, so it's not, this is supposed to be a friendly robots competition, but we also don't want people on purpose breaking rules. All right, next we're gonna go over the rules regarding the actual gameplay of the match. These are the SG rules. These tell you more about what you can do in the match and not really about how to build your robot because we just covered all those rules. So let's get started with SG1. SG1 just tells you that when you start the match, um, you have to uh, have your robot some part of your robot over this green line that is right next to your driver's station. Um, next up, we have SG2. SG2 tells you that uh, once the match starts, you can expand horizontally, so in the X or Y direction, um, out of one side of your robot up to six inches. So you can expand six inches out of one side of your robot is kind of the rule there. Um, next up, uh, and, and this is a pretty complex rule, tells you all of the uh, nuances and stuff in this rule. You can read about it if you'd like. SG3 tells you about vertical expansion. Um, vertical expansion, once the match starts, you can expand expand up to 32 inches tall, which is about the second rung on the ladder, if you want a visual reference to that. Um, SG4, just don't throw the rings or the mobile goals or anything out of the field. Keep them in the field. If you if you throw too many of them out of the field, you'll get disqualified, so uh, make sure we keep them in the field. Um, Next up, uh, SG5. This one's important. This one is definitely on my rules guide. Um, this one says that every robot, um, you get one ring to start in your robot at the beginning of the match that you can use to score wherever you like in autonomous period. Because remember that autonomous period, you get 15 second autonomous period, and then you get a one minute, 45 second driver control period where you drive your robot. Autonomous period where you program your robot to score as many points as you can. Um, SG6, this one is definitely on my uh, my reference sheet. Um, this one says that you can you can hold up to two rings and one goal at a time. You cannot hold two goals. You cannot hold four rings. You get two rings and or one goal at a time. This one is very important uh, to uh, be aware of. Um, <clears throat> Next up, SG7. Uh, don't cross the autonomous line during autonomous. So the autonomous line is this is a double line right here down the middle of the field. Don't cross that line during the autonomous period. Once the match starts, it's fair game. Um, Next up, we have uh, SG9. SG9 is just like when you're climbing up the ladder, as soon as you're off the ground, people can't push you off the ladder. Otherwise, you can push around robots pretty much as much as you want. Um, next up, um, SG11 here. This one is really, really important. This one says that during the last 15 seconds of the match, they changed it re recently in the game manual update, so 15 seconds of the match, last 15 seconds, you cannot... Um, touch any score rings or mobile goals in the uh, in the positive corners. So that one is very important to be aware of. You will get like disqualified if you do that. So make sure you do not touch those scored rings and mobile goals in the uh, positive corners in the last 15 seconds of the match. All right. That is it for the specific game rules. Now we are going to go on to our uh, more general rules. These are the G rules. Uh, we're just going to go over a couple of these real quick, just cover up, uh, covering uh, what, what all is important here. Um, uh, start with uh, G1. Uh, this was just like, a, be nice, be a good person. Um, this is a friendly robotics competition. This is not like um, football or something where you're like trying to run the other people over. Um, we're trying to be nice here. Um, G2, this one is important that you are aware of. Um, 
because it says that you have you the students must build the robots you can't have your dad your uncle your teacher your coach build the robot for you you as a student have to build the robot you can't have other people build it for you you can't buy it on the internet um, nothing like that um, you must build the robot yourself um, you can document your engineering process and turn that into for events and you can get awards for that and stuff like that so yeah you build the robot um, G3, just use common sense when you're reading these rules, when you're playing the competition, when you're at an event. Like, common sense always applies in VEX. Um, next up uh, is uh, G14, actually. G14 is a really cool rule because um, it it um, if there's kind of a close call and, like, you're not sure who violated the rule, the robot that was trying to score the points, the offensive robot, gets the benefit of the doubt here. Um, and, of course, it's the head referee's decision on what was happening. But, like, the if it's close, then the... the um, the offensive robot will get the benefit of the doubt. G15 is also really important. You can't force an opponent into a penalty. You can't put a whole bunch of rings on an opponent's robot and say, oh, look, now they're holding 10 rings. No, that's not allowed. You would get the penalty for that. Uh, you can't shove an opponent into a corner to touch the goal in the last 10 or 15 seconds. Um, that's also forcing the opponent into a penalty. Um, G16 is also very important. This one just says that um, you can push around people as much as you want, but you can't pin them against something. Um, for more than five seconds. So as soon as you start painting them against something, a referee will start counting one, two, three, four, five. Well, if they get to five and you're still holding them, you will get a penalty um, and potentially even disqualified depending on what the situation was. Um, yeah. Um, next up are the are SC rules. SC rules, these are um, scoring rules is what SC means. Um, most of these are not that important, but basically the important one is SC8 here. This is the autonomous win point. This one tells you, uh, the basically, the win points are how you get ranked at an event. Um, whoever has the most win points at an event ranks first. They get first pick on who to play with in the elimination rounds. And obviously whoever wins the elimination rounds wins the whole tournament and all that. And that's really cool. Um, so these autonomous win points are really valuable because they are one way you can get these win points that determine how well you're ranked at the event. Um, and I detail this more um, in my uh, rules guide. I explain all about it here in this tournament. It tells you how matches work. So if you're a new team, you want to know how this works, or you just want a reference guide, this is for you. Click the link in the description, and um, I will send it to you. Um, it tells you everything you need to know to build a robot and play high stakes. All right, um, this SC rule, the autonomous win point, super cool. Basically, um, at most events, it um, to get this autonomous win point, during the autonomous period, you must score three rings and uh, ac across two different stakes. Um, so you may have two rings on one stake, maybe three rings on three different stakes, whatever. Um, but you have to have three rings across two stakes. Um, and then you also have to have one robot touching uh, the ladder, and neither robot can be uh, still on that green starting line. Um, or is green in that one picture, but um, here, these, these uh, they're actually white on the field. That line or that line. So if I'm the Red Alliance, neither, because both my robots started crossing this line, neither robot can still be crossing that line at the end of the autonomous period. I have to have uh, three rings scored across two different stakes. A stake is any of these goals. It can be this Alliance stake here too, though. Um, and um, you have to have one of your robots touching this ladder here at the end. So three rings across two stakes, both robots off of this line and one robot touching the ladder. That's how it works for most events. Um, but uh, at world's qualifying events, so your state championship, signature events, stuff like that, it's a little bit harder right here. Four rings across three stakes is the change there. And one of those rings has to be on your alliance stake. Um, yeah, so that is pretty much it for all the rules that you need to know in VEX high stakes. Again, if you want this VEX V5 competition high stakes rules summary guide, this I can guarantee will like help you uh, understand the rules better and like know them better. It tells you all the rules you need to know here. Um, and I would very highly suggest you click this link in the description because it is super helpful. Um, I've sent it to teams already and they love it. It is super helpful. Um, I use it all the time. But yeah, re quick reference guide to all of your uh, rules here. Um, so you don't have to go searching through this entire 129 page game manual to find the rule that you want. Um, it'll be right here in this two page document. Um, so yeah, uh, thanks for watching, and I'm um, looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you later.